Now I give the floor to uh, Winfried Schlie, that is a scientific research coordinator of the Tinnitus Research Initiative and research associated at the Clinical and Polyclinic for Psychiatric and Psychotherapy at the University of Regensburg at the Basis Clinicum Science 2020. Sorry, but I am not a German. Thank you. Scientific coordinator at the European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Action Unity, Unification, Treatment and Interpretation for Tinnitus Patients. The overall aims of ACIT is to provide cutting-edge training for 15 international PhD students at the host institution in 10 European countries and common training school, workshop and conference event to become a new generation of highly knowledgeable and innovation expert in the field of tinnitus research. A novel understanding of tinnitus as a complex set of symptoms and manifestations is intensively investigated with an overall aims of improving a newly developing personalized treatment option from different disciplines, including novel and effective therapy, always necessarily have to consider the individual characteristic of every patient also in terms of genetics. I give the floor to Winfred uh, Schley, please. A big group, it's not only me, and um, overall we have 15 PhD students, including their supervisors and um, one important person that I want to highlight here, that is Axel Schiller, he is the network manager and without him the whole project would not be possible, but not, not thinkable and also this award would not have been possible. Um, the Easy Consortium is a graduate school financed by the Marie Curie Actions. We are working on tinnitus and um, tinnitus is a perception of a sound when there is no sound sewers out of my body. Um, it's, it's a phantom perception of a sound and um, it can be very annoying. Uh, 10 to 15 percent of the population have tinnitus, um, that's our estimation for Europe, and uh, 1 to 2 percent of the population have a severe tinnitus. That means they are severely affected, um, they have um, sleep disorders, um, they have anxiety, they have depression because of the tinnitus, um, they are able to concentrate properly and have um, problems um, with working. Um, we have no general treatment at the moment. Um, it's not possible to have the magic bullet that is uh, curing tinnitus. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, that's a very heterogeneous um, phenomenon. Um, we, as we assume that we have several, many, many different subtypes and um, every subtype probably has to be treated differently. And um, another problem which is um, difficult for research is that tinnitus is not a stable phenomenon that is always the same. Um, it can fluctuate their temporal um, uh, fluctuations, it's up and down, and um, this makes it more difficult for research. In the ESIT consortium, we have three goals, um, three big research goals. And um, the, the first goal is to understand these individual differences in tinnitus. Um, we want to also promote comparability between different clinical studies and um, between um, clinical data. And um, importantly for this award, we want to develop individualized treatment solutions. And we have eight PhD students working um, towards this goal. I want to present you very quickly now and these, diff uh, these eight different projects. And the first one is the work by Jorge Zemois. Um, he's using big data sets um, from internet crowd sensing, smartphone apps, longitudinal clinical databases, and biobanks. And he wants to find out what how can we predict for the individual case and how can we predict what can we predict for the individual case, um, which treatment might be more beneficial than another treatment. Uh, to give you one example, here sound therapy, um, he found out that it's more, um, uh, well, there's more hope for, for women than for men. Um, we have a gender effect here and um, this is, has also been replicated in another study then by another um, ESIT student that um, indeed is the case um, uh, also in another study that uh, women benefit more from sound therapy. Um, but before you come to these predictions, um, you have to assess the individual case um, as precisely as possible. How to do that in a standardized way, that was the work um, of uh, Eleni Genitaridi. Um, she's working um, on a 
questionnaire um, that we call ACIT-SQ, which is available in eight different languages now, and it's also um, uh, available in Creative Commons license um, to make it really publicly available um, all over the world and um, to standardize here the assessment um, for the individual clinical case. <clears throat> the next work is um, the work of basically of, of two, two students, um, uh, Natalia and um, Asana. They are working on genetics of tinnitus. Before the beginning of the ISIT consortium, our knowledge about genetics and tinnitus was very limited. Um, we did not know a lot about it. And now we, we are big steps forward. We know that the heritability is somewhere between 0.27 and 0.68. Um, uh, we, the reason why there's a, such a big span is um, that there's a sexual dimorphism also um, for the different cases. And uh, to give you one example, for bilateral tinnitus in men, the heritability is 0.68, which is quite high. Um, and Sana is especially uh, working on uh, extreme phenotypes <clears throat> for tinnitus. Meniere's disease is um, uh, this, this example here. And she identified um, some genes here that are, might be important um, for for the heritability of tinnitus in these cases. For the treatment of tinnitus, um, it's important to know that hearing loss is one of the major risk factors. And um, when you have an individual patient with hearing loss uh, and you want to fit a hearing aid um, for the fitting, um, there are two things that need to Taken, need to be taken into account um, the individual audiogram and the individual tinnitus frequency. There are different options how to do that and uh, how to fit um, uh, then the hearing aid for the individual case. And uh, one of our work, um, one of our PhD students works on, on this goal, um, Jose Lopez and Cruz. He's um, comparing different, different fitting methods for the individual cases. Um, Another big treatment option is um, cognitive behavioral therapy. Matthias uh, Lorenzo is working on, um, on, on CBT for tinnitus patients. And uh, for those that are familiar with CBT, it's uh, basically a toolkit of many intervention methods. And um, not for every individual, everything works fine and um, works best. And uh, the question is, what is the best for whom? And um, then for research, the question is, how can we find it out? And um, uh, Matthias suggests that single case experimental designs are um, a good way to, to find out um, what is the best um, for whom, and um, he's working towards this goal. <clears throat> the next uh, treatment that um, I want to show is a neurofeedback. Um, we know how the brain um, looks like on average um, when there's a tinnitus perception, how's the brain activity when, when tinnitus Tinnitus is perceived, and how um, the tinnit, uh, how the brain activity looks like when tinnitus is not perceived. Um, these are some differences that are known, and um, it's been um, suggested that neurofeedback can be used to train the brain towards the direction of not perceiving a tinnitus sound. Um, it's the technique is around um, for a while, and it, in the beginning, it started with um, looking at the grand average here and what are the the, the differences of tinnitus um, patients. Um, and controls um, in a large population. And um, here in the ISI consortium, Constanze Riha is working on more um, looking at the individual differences um, of tinnitus and how this can be used for a fine craning and improving the new feedback method. The last uh, paradigm that I want to show you here for treatment is um, a paradigm that we call it activated fire. Um, it's a combination of, of two interventions. It's uh, first of all, it's a sound stimulation and uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation. With the sound stimulation, we want to activate, uh, we want to use sounds that are activating the tinnitus um, areas in the brain, um, basically neuronal cell assemblies that are um, associated with the activation of with the uh, processing of the tinnitus sound. We want to activate this by sounds and then fire with the transcranial magnetic, magnetic stimulation to suppress this activity, this tinnitus related activity. Now I've shown you um, eight different projects. I've teased you um, 
give you only a um, little information if you want to find out more. Um, uh, you're happy to uh, to visit us on our web page uh, where we have all the publications listed. At the moment, we have uh, 36 publications coming out of the ESIT program, and the number is steadily increasing. Um, you can you can see it on our web page. Uh, you can also follow us um, on Twitter or on Facebook Facebook uh, with um, at um, ESIT project and. Uh, there are many, many more papers will be coming out in the next few weeks <clears throat> since we are towards the end of the project. And now I'm also towards the end of my presentation. Uh, thanks for your attention and um, I'm happy to answer questions. Thanks a lot. Thank uh, Winnie of this uh, presentation that described that uh, the personal medicine have a solution in different field. And uh, this is a very interesting solution uh, that you described to us. Unfortunately, we have a little delay uh, in, the, in the presentation. Uh, we have no time for the discussion. However, it's possible for everyone to uh, submit through the, uh, the Italian team of this uh, recognition uh, grant to uh, some question that we move uh, to the we transfer to the pi of this uh, uh, of this way of this is um, version of this version so i uh, i say i thank you all of i of uh, you about uh, this uh, uh, relevant uh, uh, session and i ask to you to take in uh, in say tune with the ec permed for the next uh, ver version of this uh, uh, of this competition, and I hope that the next version is could be possible in face to face way. So thank you very much to all. Thanks a lot, Gaetano, and uh, please I would like to uh, welcome uh, all our uh, recognition. Uh, 2020 laureates uh, and speakers of the session together with Gaetano to have a great smile in the camera. Unfortunately, we miss, of course, the on the stage picture, but we hope at least to have a nice uh, screenshot from all of you. Thanks a lot for your great smile. <laughs> and well, therewith again, congratulations from my side to all the different laureates, also those that are presenting their work in form of posters. Thanks a lot, Gaetano, for moderating this session. And therewith, uh, we are at the end of um, uh, this uh, session. I would like to remind everyone that you will find um, a pre-announcement of the next recognition uh, 2021. So let's say the next edition around September this year. So don't forget to uh, check AC Permit and to see uh, uh, if there are news about the AC Permit recognition. Therewith, um, while well, we are going into a short pause, we are back here at 2.30, so with a little bit delay in the program. Thanks a lot and see you soon again. And thanks to all the speakers from the session.